Hey YouTube, how's it going? This is Games Trade81. Uh, this is a video request. I've had a number of people wanting to see the Amiga CD32. Uh, well, here it is. Um, it's an interesting system. It came out in 1993, uh, released in uh, the UK and Canada. Uh, I think uh, Europe as well, over Europe. But uh, the interesting thing about the system was, um, you know, obviously Commodore made it, um, and there were plans on releasing it in the States, uh, but there was a patent issue. And uh, the company had a patent to uh, some kind of technology in the system, and it didn't end up getting off the ground. And by the time uh, they were ready to roll it out, um, they basically get went, uh, Commodore went bankrupt and uh, never really hit the states. A few of the systems made it over to the states uh, through Canada, uh, through the borders over there. But uh, yeah, so a lot of Americans uh, may not know what the system is. Uh, I'm going to do kind of a quick review on it. Um, you've got uh, now it's basically what it is. It, it's advertised as the very first 32-bit uh, uh, CD uh, system. Now, uh, that's not necessarily true because, um, as I had mentioned in the uh, FM Towns Marty review earlier that I did, um, that that was actually the very first. I actually beat the beat the system to market by seven months. However, the FM Towns Marty was only released in Japan, so this is, I guess, the first 32-bit CD system uh, released outside of Japan. <laughs> um, now, there were, of course, CD systems released before this. Uh, but they're all add-ons. You know, Turbo Graphics had a CD system add-on. Obviously, the Sega CD, uh, Jaguar even had an add-on uh, later on. But this is this is actually uh, the first uh, CD-based system. Now, it's basically it's an Amiga, um, and it's basically a, a stripped-down Amiga computer, uh, and it's Commodore's kind of first attempt to to make the system uh, in a, like in the in the market more or less. Um, now you've got your uh, your volume control here, and you've got your uh, your uh, headphone jack. Um, this kind of reminds me a lot of the Sega Genesis Model 1. Um, I just think it looks very similar to it. Um, you've got your reset button here. Um, now the interesting thing is there's no eject uh, button or anything like that. You've just got to kind of flip it open and uh, this is where the CDs are uh, or the, the games go into. I would play CDs obviously. Um, now the interesting thing is in the front there's no uh, no controller out port. This is kind of interesting. I'm like, that's kind of weird. Um, on this, there's nothing on the side either. Now it's on the other side. Uh, you've got your uh, your your nine pin uh, controller port. So um, now these will now Genesis controllers will work on the system. Uh, so will Atari system, yeah, controllers. They're all nine nine pin. Now on the back you've got your AV out. Uh, you've got your uh, if you want to hook up to a monitor you can do that. You also can hook it up to an RV uh, RF uh, cable. Um, this is kind of a, it's a fairly heavy, thick uh, system. Um, now there was an expansion to this system that came out and it basically allowed it to, it's called the Paravision SX-1 and it basically allowed it to, um, to basically be a full-fledged uh, A1200 um, Commodore computer. You could hook up uh, a keyboard, uh, you could hook up uh, a mouse, a floppy di uh, disk drive, and I actually have one, um, and this is what it looks like. And uh, it's kind of weird looking. Now, this was not made by Commodore. This is a third-party uh, release, and these are pretty uncom pretty uncommon. And what you would do is uh, this back here would actually you'd have to screw it, and, and uh, you you plug it in there, and it would kind of uh, it would enhance the memory, and it would do a whole bunch of stuff, so you could actually play uh, certain games because it was compatible with uh, you know all the Amiga games uh, at the time. But there were certain games that you need a keyboard for, and there were some games that just didn't really work. Uh, because of that. Now, interesting thing about this uh, 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 system as well is it had a kind of an interesting controller. Now, this thing, it's maybe hard to tell, but this thing is gigantic. Uh, it's very long and narrow. Um, it's it's interesting. It, now, actually, it handles pretty well. Um, it feels pretty well in the hands. Now, this the, the control uh, pad right here, um, I don't know, it's pretty sketchy. Um, you got your color buttons. I'm not sure what was with the color buttons before. I know the Famicom had them, and uh, the uh, fun tech I just reviewed earlier in a video had colored buttons, but what's interesting is uh, the red button here, uh, it's bigger than the rest, and they feel very uh, plasticky, um, not very good um, to push. Um, now, there wasn't a select button, but there was a start button, this huge start button, and it almost feels like you got to press really hard to, to pause it. Uh, you've got your bumpers here. Um, I'll do a couple game reviews later on on the system. Uh, when I, It's interesting, when I ordered the system, I got it on eBay a while back, and uh, when I ordered it, um, it came with, the guy said it came with 25 games, you know, which is cool, but little did I know they were actually going to be burned. Um, so I have like 25 games, and they all do work. Um, so that's cool, but obviously there's no 
thing in here to prevent that from happening. I know the Sega CD and earlier systems had the same problem um, because uh, back then it was it was very hard to burn CDs, so it didn't really think about that. Um, so this is the review over the Amiga CD32. Um, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll, we'll see you later, YouTube. Take care. Bye-bye.